Hi, and welcome to Run Tall with Tim. I'm Tim, and today I'm comparing two highly versatile daily training running shoes, the Reebok Forever Float Ride Energy 3 with the Brooks Launch 8. If you're new to the channel, I post videos on both Wednesday and Saturday mornings, and that's at 5 a.m. Standard Eastern Time here in the U.S. I also like to post bonus videos once in a while, but I never know what day of the week that's going to be or what time. So if you enjoy watching running shoe reviews and other videos related to running, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time that I upload new content. Also, if you want to save yourself a little time, I tried to make that easy for you. If you open the description, there you're going to see where I've created chapters. Just click on the timestamp for the part of the video that you want to watch, and it's going to take you right there. I always like to start by demonstrating what it looks like to run in the shoes, but then when we come back together, we're going to compare these two to see which one might be right for you. Now this video is not intended to be a full review of either shoe, but if you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description below that'll take you to full reviews of each of them that I've done previously. Now both of these cost 100 US dollars, so they are exactly the same in terms of cost, and they're very similar in terms of weight. The Reebok Forever Float Ride Energy 3 has a stated weight of 8.5 ounces or 240 grams, and that's for a men's size nine. For women, it's 7.1 ounces or 201 grams for a woman's size 8. For the Brooks Launch 8, for men's size 9, they come in at 8.7 ounces or 247 grams. For a women's size 8, they come in at 7.5 ounces or 213 grams. So I want to talk about the fit first. And you know, right now, as I'm making this video, I have the Brooks Launch 8 on my left foot and I have the Reebok Forever Float Ride Energy 3 on my right foot, and I've been wearing them around like that for, oh, about two, three hours just to kind of give me a good sense of how they fit and the comfort and all that kind of good stuff so I can share it with you and be as accurate as I possibly can be. And I can say that, you know, after having them on and trying them out, one on each foot for, you know, for a few hours, I can tell you that, you know, they feel about the same across my midfoot in terms of how wide they are and in terms of how much room there is in the toe box. Again, they're almost identical. I can't really tell much difference between those two. The one area that they, I do notice a difference is in the heel. And with the Brooks Launch 8, I feel like I have a more secure or lockdown feeling in the heel. Not that the Reebok doesn't give me that. I just think that there's a little bit more uh, in the Launch 8 than there is in the uh, Forever Float Ride Energy 3. Now, looking at the material that they've made, we have the square knit mesh upper on the Reebok and we have an air mesh on the Brooks. 
The difference between these two is the Reebok is a slightly softer feeling to it and a little bit more form fitting, not as stiff of material. And I, between the two, I prefer the feeling of the Reebok over the Brooks Launch 8. And that's personal preference. Some might prefer the other way around, uh, but it does feel like that uh, material is just a little bit softer and a little bit more form fitting. Uh, and I found that to be uh, really comfortable. They're both comfortable. I think though that in this case, the Reebok, I have to give the nod to them in terms of you know, the uh, feeling of that upper material. In terms of you know plastic overlays and you know let's let's just zoom in. We'll start with the Reebok and we'll move our way around to the side of the shoe and you can see that there really isn't much going on there other than the Reebok logo. And then as we make our way back around to the heel uh, counter, you can see that they have just a little bit of structure there. And now moving over to the Brooks Launch 8. Again, almost the same kind of deal going on. Not a whole lot uh, happening in terms of plastic overlays, a little bit with their Brooks logo along that midsection of the shoe. And again, as we move our way around to that heel counter, about the same in terms of structure in the heel. So in terms of quality of build and the features, the uppers are really similar. Uh, they are about the same in terms of breathability. I haven't noticed much difference. Looking now at the lace enclosure system on each one, you know, there's no big wow factor here, but they do a great job in giving you a nice snug lockdown feeling across your midfoot. So I did appreciate that, and you really can't go wrong with either one. Now there is a slight difference in the tongue of these. With the Reebok Forever Float Ride Energy 3, they have a fully gusseted tongue, and that's always terrific. You don't have to worry about your tongue migrating around or getting bunched up or anything along those lines. Uh, now with the Brooks Launch 8, it's not gusseted at all, but I didn't have any issues with it uh, you know, migrating around either. So they both still lay flat on my foot, very comfortable. Their padding is about the same. You know, it, the material is slightly different. The Reebok uses really kind of a neoprene feeling to it, while the Brooks Launch 8 is a more traditional cloth type feeling. Since we're talking about padding, let's take a close look at the heel collar and tab on each. And in this case, the Reebok Forever Float Ride Energy 3 does seem to have more padding, both in the heel collar as well as the tab. Each shoe has a nice Achilles heel flare, and that felt really comfortable. Now, don't get me wrong, both have more than enough padding to keep comfortable when out running. It's just the Reebok has a little bit more of it. Looking now at the heel counter and the structure in the heel, when I give them the pinch test, so you know, as I pinch that material together, or I try to go forward, you know, it's pretty equivalent with both shoes. I didn't really notice much difference here. So again, pinching it together and kind of trying to go forward with it, they're pretty much the same. Now, both shoes have removable insoles. I always appreciate that. There is a slight difference, however, with the Reebok Forever Float Ride Energy 3. That insole is pretty thin, so there's just not a lot of structure to it. It's still comfortable. It's just not nearly as plush as the one that's in the Launch 8. Now let's compare the midsole or the engine of these shoes. And with the Reebok Forever Float Ride Energy 3, it has 26 millimeters in the heel and 17 millimeters in the forefoot of their float ride foam. And you know, it feels really natural to run in. They're soft, they have a lot of responsiveness. You do feel a lot of ground contact in these. And so they feel really natural you know, through my gait cycle. And I appreciate that. You know, they, they feel pretty nimble. So, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot to spring through your toe off. And they seem to have a pretty aggressive uh, rocker in the forefoot of the shoe. With the Brooks Launch 8, now here too, they have 26 millimeters of foam in the heel and 16 millimeters in the forefoot. So the Brooks has a 10 millimeter offset from the heel to the toe, as opposed to the nine millimeters that are in the Reebok. They also have what they call their Biomogo and DNA foam that's been fused together to create that midsole material. The biggest difference that I've noticed in these is in the lateral side of the shoe, back in the heel area. So I'm talking about back here. This feels a li little bit more stout than it does in the Forever Float Ride, um, and more so in the heel as well. Also, 
I don't feel like these were quite as nimble of a midsole material. So a little bit stiffer through my uh, gait cycle and not nearly as aggressive in that midsole material either. As I pointed out with the Reebok, they've got a pretty good curvature there uh, starting basically around your metatarsal head where the, where the Brooks Launch 8 isn't quite as an aggressive curve. So let's flip these over and we'll take a look at the outsole to see how they're protecting all of that midsole foam that they have. And you can see that on both of these that they have plenty of rubber to protect that midsole foam. But the big difference is with Reebok, they're using a carbon rubber. Brooks is using a blown rubber. But again, there's plenty of it. I don't think that you're going to have any issues at all with longevity or durability. I can see both of these easily going to four or 500 miles without any kind of issue there. And they both felt like they had plenty of traction when I was out running. No issues with the, with the outsole on either one. The one thing I will note though that is a difference is the Brooks does seem to have a bit more of a wider platform to land on here uh, as opposed to Reebok, which is just a little bit more narrow. So this gives you a, a bit more of a stable feeling in terms of pronation. So in my case, I over pronate. And between these two, I would say that the Launch 8 is better suited for somebody who over pronates uh, just because of the way that that DNA uh, loft material that's been uh, uh, fused with their Biomogo. You know, Brooks does a great job in terms of reducing the pro level of pronation when you run. So you're going to find that with the Launch 8. And if you enjoy that shoe, they also have, or if you need to have more stability, they do have a stability version of the Launch 8 as well. Overall, in terms of performance between these two, my pick is going to be the Reebok. You know, it just feels a bit more nimble. It feels a little quicker to me underfoot and it's softer to run in. But both are terrific shoes. I hope that this helps you decide which one might be right for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.